Sometimes you need to feel the pain and sting of defeat to activate the real passion and purpose that God predestined inside of you. God says in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Graduating class, hear me well on this day. When you hit this day when you have reached the hilltop and you are deciding on, on next jobs, next steps, careers, further education, you would rather find purpose than a job or a career. Purpose crosses disciplines. Purpose is an essential element of you. It is the reason you are on the planet at this particular time in history. Your very existence is wrapped up in the things you are here to fulfill. Whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. Chadwick Boseman, thank you for that. Um, we're here. We're joined today. Drew McCaskill, of course, is here. Dr. Aaron King Mullins, we're talking colorectal cancer. Um, before we went to break, bowel movements, I, I put that out there. Um, I think a lot of us don't go to the bathroom enough. And what does that do to our body if we're not going once or twice a day? Sure. Um, so believe it or not, you actually don't have to go every single day. Um, everybody's physiology is going to be a little bit different based upon, number one, their diet, but also some of their medical history, medications they may be on, um, if they've had any surgeries or anything like that. Um, but one of the keys that I tell people um, who complain that they're constipated is, you know, number one, when you go to the restroom, um, it should not be a production. Um, so, you know, you shouldn't be able to sit there and read a book. You know, you should be able to go and go comfortably. Um, once you're done, you should feel like you're done. And in the meantime, until the next time it's time to go, you should not feel bloated, uncomfortable, or constipated. So, you know, if that's every two days, then that's actually okay. If it's every three days, then it's okay. Just again, as long as you're going comfortably, you know, it's not overly runny. It's not too hard. It's a comfortable go. So that I think I may be too regular because no. I'm definitely no, I think that I'm definitely a two a day kind of individual. No, and some people go, and that's fine. Some people go. Some people's body respond, and some people literally have a bowel movement after every meal. Um, and isn't that the way it should the, be, though, Doc? I mean, isn't that the health? Like your body should <laughs> eliminate the waste. Is is you? Why are you laughing? No. It, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, because, you know, we have so many conversations about this, and we'll, I'll actually kind of go into that whole colonic thing a little bit in a min minute because I see so many patients who, you know, are so, like, literally obsessed with their bowel movements, and they're like, oh, my gosh, if I don't go in a few days, I go take a colonic, and then I feel great. Um, and, you know, it really – so part of it is the um, – we have this thing in our body. The technical term is the gastrocolic reflux, gastro meaning stomach, colic meaning colon. And so for some people, their stomach sends a signal to the colon, you know, basically right away when they eat and it's time to go, you know, have a bowel movement. Patients, for example, who are diabetic, um, they have, a, a, uh, if they have, if they suffer from what we call as gastroparesis, their stomach function is slower than other, others. And so that process moves a little bit slower through their body. So again, it's going to vary from person to person, but um, don't be alarmed. The colon does not absorb toxins. So having that sitting there is not going to then, you know, permeate your body and make you ill. Um, and again, one of the things is making sure that you're having a healthy diet. So if you aren't going as frequently as you like, one of the things is to look back at the amount of water and fiber you're consuming. Those are the two most quick fixes. Um, again, people don't really realize how much exercise plays a role in digestion. Um, your colon and your intestines, they have muscles in their lining that literally squeeze to propel the food and everything forward. And so exercising gets the blood flow throughout your body just like it does to the rest of your muscles, your heart, your brain, and everything else. And so limited blood flow is then going to diminish its ability for that muscle in your gut to squeeze appropriately. And so, um, you know, being physically active is also important. Um, on the just, topic of... Let me co-sign. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to co-sign. <laughs> You're correct. Go ahead. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, and some people literally notice the difference. I'll have people come and say, you know, I've been constipated for the past couple of months, um, especially now during the pandemic. People aren't getting out quite as much. And then I ask them, you know, when did you, you know, kind of start notice the change in your bowel slowing down? And then I say, man, I used to go to the gym every day and now I don't. And I'm like, well, you've changed that activity. So go back and get yourself working out and see if that fixes it. If, if things persist and you have a persistent, prolonged change in how your bowels are moving, then that's when we really need to be doing, you know, further investigation. Um, with regard to colonic, um, the most natural way to cleanse your colon is from up top. And again, you know, going back to the fruits and the vegetables and the fiber, um, you know, that, that manual um, literally flushing of your colon can really actually disrupt the balance, again, of that good and bad bacteria that we talked about before. And you can actually become, you know, your colon can to some degree become dependent on it because now um, it's it's constantly that's the only way you can evacuate yourself is because you've kind of disrupted the natural balance between that good and the bad bacteria. Mm-hmm. And you may not necessarily be focusing on those other things we talked about as much because now you're like, oh, if I don't go, I'll just take a colonic. And so it kind of diverts your mind into other things instead of really focusing on the things that you really should be doing. Okay, let's take some callers. Uh, Candy in Florida has been holding on. Thank you for that clarification too, Dr. Dr. Mullins. <laughs> Appreciate you, King Mullins. Hey, Candy. Yes. Uh, hi, how are you? I'm a first-time caller. Um, oh. I, I, I was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer earlier this year, and um, it had spread to my liver. And so um, I'm, I'm going to a pretty reputable um, oncologist here, and I've been asking questions about how I can get um, a surgery to just get rid of all of it. Um, and what I'm being told is that, no, because it's stage four, you know, we're just going to give you chemotherapy, and this is probably something you'll live with for the rest of your life, and which is something I don't really want to accept. Um, mm-hmm. And I just wanted to know, because I took on the report when Herman Cain died, and, it, you know, he had colon cancer. He had it spread to his liver, the same as mine. He had indications in his symptoms, the same as mine. And, yeah, he had surgery, and he was able to live 15 years cancer-free. And I'm just wondering, you know, why the doctors here are telling me, no, you just keep taking this chemotherapy. Sure. Um, thank you so much for calling in and, you know, um, blessings to you and, and going through this journey. Um, I will say, you know, without knowing the full extent of your case, um, typically, so th- there's different standards of care that, you know, no matter where you get treated with regard to colorectal cancer, if you're in Timbuktu or if you're at MD Anderson Cancer Center, um, there are certain protocols that you follow uh, that research has shown to be effective. And so when you are initially diagnosed with stage four, that literally means that the cancer cells have spread to other places in the body. And even though um, it has made an appearance in your liver, theoretically, it has to get there uh, either via lymph nodes or via uh, the blood flow tract. And so um, theoretically, there are other places of cancer in your body that may have may not be showing up on CT scans, MRIs, you know, things like that. And so what chemotherapy is designed to do is control the system, you know, control the cancer cells that are throughout the body. And you do that for a certain period of time, and they continue to monitor to you with Um, your blood tests and your scans and things like that. Um, And sometimes some patients, depending on their response to that therapy, um, can become surgical candidates, meaning that the cancer has been controlled in such a way that it really is only confined to a certain place that then surgically you can go remove it. Um, But once you've been diagnosed with it being spread to other places, there's no way to physically see all the areas where the cancer is, and thereby there will be no way to physically remove all of the presence of that cancer. I hope I answered your question um, appropriately. Candy. Okay. Um, God bless her. Um, As you said, it is a journey that she's on, and... um, Man, you you think about what people are going through, which is the other level. You never know what someone's going through. And, you know, there's a lot of comments about Chadwick Boseman's appearance in his last days. 
I'm sure all of those people wish that they could take back those horrible things that they said about him um, because you never know, which is the thing. So stage, before I let you go, uh, we have limited time. Stage one, two, three, you just explained four. What is stage three, two, and one? Sure. So stage one um, means that the tumor is two and a half centimeters in size or less or less, which is roughly an inch. It's just on the lining of the colon. It hasn't spread through the wall of the colon um, to reach a the potential to go into other places. Stage two means that the tumor is larger than two and a half centimeters, but has not yet reached that capability where it has gone to the lymph nodes where it can thereby spread to other places. So those are called local disease because they're literally confined to the colon. Stage three means that it has gone through the wall to the level of the lymph node system. And so now that is declared regional disease. So the lymph nodes are going to be its first step to then spread to other places in the body, which then would be stage four. Okay. Um, we're going to keep having you back on. We have to go to, uh, we have to go. I appreciate your time. You are always ready to come in and talk. Uh, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron King Mullins. Uh, amazing. Thank you. And there's still so many people on, do you answer questions on Twitter? Um, I can, and if I could, we literally on last Thursday or Friday released, um, a series that we're going to be doing a focus on cancer in the African-American community, um, here in Atlanta. Um, but it's going to be zoom web. So it's open across the country. Um, it's with the cancer support community. Um, I will post it to your Twitter, but you can go to www.csatlanta.org. 